Hello and welcome. This is a short video on how to upload larger projects efficiently to GitHub. Now, in the past, our projects have only been, you know, not fairly large, maybe one, two, three, you know, maybe eight files when all is said and done with a few folders. Uh, so GitHub isn't going to really freak out. But as we start importing uh, lots of other people's u useful libraries, you know, our programs tend to explode exponentially in size. Um, because we're using Express, uh, we'll see that we've downloaded uh, a lot of projects for it. And, you know, I just can't reliably count, but I'm sure we have over a few hundred files. And uh, GitHub isn't going to like this. Uh, imagine that everyone's uploading all of their projects to GitHub, because uh, many companies are. You know, this is going to produce a huge uh, problem for them because they'll have to buy literally thousands to millions of more terabytes of information just because you're uploading every single piece of code imaginable. Now, in reality, uh, that's not really what they need to do because since everybody's sharing code together, you really only need one original copy of what is shared amongst all. Hence, uh, what we're seeing today with millennials and the economy. You know, we have things like Uber, which you know, for better or for worse, you're not using your car for 24 hours a day. So you know, you're using it to provide another service uh, to other people. The you know, the share economy or the access economy. Same thing with streaming. You know. You're not necessarily buying the physical copyright to um, a DVD that you're watching on Netflix. You know, you're buying the ability to look at their copy of whatever the movie or the TV show is, but you don't actually own that copy. Uh, so GitHub kind of is working the same way. You don't really, I mean, you can put a copyright on your code, but you know, there is only going to be one copy of the code that you're sharing and it doesn't need to be stored multiple times. So uh, let's just take a look at how we're going to do this so that we can upload it efficiently to GitHub and uh, you know we're not saddling them with extra megabytes, terabytes you know, of uh, data. This little graphic down here is not really important uh, but I did find it extremely uh, useful for your future when you start contributing more and more to GitHub uh, you'll start using these words. Basically, um, when you take code from the website, that's called pull. Uh, when you want to make a, a small change to it, that would be called a push. Uh, other people can make pull requests. And forking is similar to cloning. Uh, you're making a copy of it with the intention for the fork to be pulled at some point. Uh, pushes or would be things that you would do specifically, but uh, forking and pulling would be things that other people would do to your code to help improve it. So let's get to it. Uh, that's where I obviously got that graphic. So I'm on my GitHub page, and I want to make a new repository. But again, I want to be kind. I don't want to upload many megabytes of data that's already been uploaded to GitHub before. So let's say I make a new repository. And I just call this uh, test because it is a test. Oh, wait, I already made a test. All right, test repo. Hey, test repo. And what have you. Now, before at this point, you guys just clicked create. But we do have some other options that I haven't explored with you yet. Um, of course, we need to click the initialize readme. Otherwise, we're going to enter into the advanced user settings. But notice here it says add a git ignore and add a license. It's going to be this ignore that's going to make our project really, really slim. So I click on these options, and it spills off the page. And it's asking me, you know, would I like to ignore these language files? No, 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 no. I just wanted to show you that there's a lot of things that you could ignore, but I know what we're looking for. We're looking for Node. Well, if you didn't want to scroll all the way down there, of course, you could type it in here node and there you go and so what this will do is this will only keep the files in our application that are not associated with our install statements that we used npm to install just to give you an idea of how many files that is 
Uh, let's say I were to go to the app that I am, you know, looking to upload in the future. I got one, two, three, four, five, you know. Okay, so I got five files here, but then I go in the node modules folder, and oh my god, these are all folders, and each one of them has many files. I mean, it's ridiculous. So by using the ignore option, I am ignoring all of these potential files. Right? I mean, I can't. I don't want to count all these. There's a way to count them all. There's a program that'll do it. But I'm ignoring all of these files in my upload because they're already somewhere else on GitHub. We installed them. When we said npm install, it went somewhere on GitHub and it found those files and it downloaded them for us. So uh, this is the secret right here. You do everything else the same, but you add an ignore statement. So let's um, ignore all the node files. And here you go. Uh, this is just a file that tells us what we're supposed to ignore. I could go to Upload Files. And, of course, I could choose the files. And, well, it's not in this folder. All right, let's back out. I'm assuming that's me. Okay, there's a desk. No, it's in my documents. Documents. GitHub. I chose this one. Uh, or did I not go back? That one. Choose your files. Okay, fine. I'll do all of them. Open. Bing, bang, boom. See, notice it didn't give me the other ones, which is fine. Let's see. Committing first upload. I do want those folders, though. It didn't like me. Processing my files. Hmm. This is under test repo. Let's see if I can get those uh, folders in here. It says I can drag. One, two. There we go. All right, well, let me do the manual select, I suppose. Go to 15. Do the 15. I hate you. I hate you. All right, let's just try and do it. Folder uploads. You know, because I bet it did finish, and it just, you know, said it didn't. Bin. Do I need bin? I probably need bin. All right. Let's go back. Upload the bin. Bin is short for binary. Other dude. Okay, so we've now accomplished the first part of the phase, which is uploading only the things that we need. So I don't need the node modules folder because I can download that whenever I want. Uh, so we're going to practice re-downloading and running the application from this point forward. So um, I don't need that. Okay, where am I? I'm right here. Okay, so say I want to work on this another day. Someone else is wanting to use my code, etc., etc. Um, I will say, you know, like you guys have done before, download zip. So here's my project, and I did not double click on it, show in folder. All right, I will unzip it here. I always got to wait for that message. Extract to here. There it goes. I really hate that the folders are always at the bottom. Okay. Get over here. This 
So I have these settings enabled. So again, you'll notice the node modules folder isn't here, but I opened up my git bash window. So if I ask it where I am, it says I'm on the desktop, which you saw me put the folder on the desktop. I'm in the folder, and it just made the folder name twice, because it always does that. So here we are. Now if I try to npm start it, I'm telling you it'll fail. You know why it'll fail? Because it's looking for things that don't exist. For instance, it doesn't have express. Well, because the node modules folder doesn't exist. So I have to install it. npm install. And what that'll do is that'll actually go inside of, and you can see it just popped up. It's not done yet, but uh, now it's done. So it downloaded all those packages that didn't exist before, and here they are. I did not need to re-upload them to GitHub because they were there the whole time. Now if I run this again, it'll still fail. And uh, you can ask yourselves why it'll still fail. Let's see how good you are. Is it because potentially my app uses a specific technology that starts with R, and I did not start that first? Because the answer is... Oh, well, I'll be damned. Somehow <laughs> somehow Redis has been on, on my computer this whole time. And I did not turn it on, so that's rather interesting. Who turned it on? Well, it should fail for you guys. So that's why I point this out. So always make sure that you turn on Redis before you start your app. Um, specifically, I put mine, you know, yours is on your folder, right? But I put mine in the C drive or what have you. Where is it? Where's it at? R. There it is. So you guys would have to, you know, click this guy. But apparently my guy just likes running, so I did not have to do that. Maybe that's because I downloaded 4.9. You guys are using 4.7, so that could be it. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is how you would upload your programs efficiently uh, so that I can look at them from time to time. Now, you don't have to upload them every day, uh, but I would certainly say at the end of every week, go ahead and upload your project to uh, GitHub. Make sure it's not called test, though, right? I only called it test because, you know, I'm going to delete this in five minutes. Uh, name it the same thing as your project, and if you guys have questions, you know, this enables me to be able to look at it at home because I can't look at your flash drives. So thank you for watching, and have a good continuation of break.